When it is late in October, many fields in Mexico are filled with yellow flowers, wild marigold, the zempasucho. In Mexico, both the season and the flower are symbols of death. But the attributes of death, which the zempasuchil represents, are for most Mexicans neither morbid nor sentimental. In Mexico, an intimate acceptance of death extends far back into pre-Hispanic times. In the Aztec culture, which preceded the coming of the Spaniard, death shows itself again and again a familiar image. These ancient things of this land were joined over the centuries with the Spanish celebration of all souls. Together, they form a universal festival of many facets and many dimensions, the Day of the Dead. The skulls of this Aztec codex are not unlike the sugar ones that appear in each Mexican marketplace toward the end of October, in preparation for the day when the dead return and are welcomed by the living. The changing moods of a town's marketplace anticipate each coming holiday. The Day of the Dead is preceded by its own rich flood of special objects. The form can change from state to state, from small village to large city. The interpretation of the celebration will not be the same among Indians as it is among those of Spanish descent. But through all these changes runs a strong, consistent thread. The aim of this film is to recall this thread through the objects that are part of the celebration by showing the way they are made, sold, and used. It is a rich folk art, and the people that produce it are the same as the people that will buy and use it. Their homes are the same, and they have the same personal involvement in the celebration itself. The sugar skulls and muertitos are for the children, who by eating them will show themselves more a compadre of death than afraid of it. The animales, the deer, the frogs, we will put on the ofrendas and on the graves. They will help the departed on the journey to the land of the dead, to Mixtlan. It will be through forests and rivers, so the animales can help make this journey safe. Here, in the marketplace, the amount and variety of material is bizarre. 
the skeleton or calavera is everywhere. Printed calaveras, not too gently remind us, sooner or later, famous or obscure, we all will become dead ones. These classic calaveras are the work of the great Posada. The caped and plumed and guitared skeletons are calaveras of Don Juan Tenorio, the swashbuckling hero of Jose Soria's play, traditionally performed each year at this season, complete with graves and ghosts. this home, friends bring flowers. The stones before the door are well marked with zempasuchil, so that the spirit of a beautiful young girl can find its way home. 
She has been dead only five months. There is no sign of sadness, no superficial gaiety, nor any hint that struggling emotions are being held in check. It is a dedicated preparation for a good party, which the Angelita will enjoy and in which she will take part. Every detail and movement of the preparation speaks of complete involvement. There is conviction and precision in the way each object becomes a part of the altar, the ofrenda. The party costs a large part of this family's annual income, and to them it will be well worth it. After the ofrenda is built, the father fires rockets to help guide the angel back home. In the kitchen, new atole and tamales are being prepared to give the guests. An orchestra plays, people dance and pray. Tears are shed for the living. We never shed tears for the dead. We must be very careful that no tears drop on this day because it would make the roads slippery and dangerous for the souls on their journey to Mixtlan. We must provide food and flowers and light and things they need most and also the things they liked best. After the dead partake of the food, we, of course, will eat it, but much of it will be missing because they will have taken the flavor, the essence, sometimes even the weight. On the following day, there is a party-like atmosphere in the cemetery. The villagers, women, men, and children, joyously decorate the graves of their relatives with skill and care and affection. Repainting crosses and names, working with flower petals on the earth, and taking time to admire and praise the work of others. It is a warm companionship between the living and the dead and the living.